the video. Look at me. Smile. Hello, my name is Edward Fox. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Hey, I know I haven't been posting in quite some time. I've been busy with school, work, and I've just been figuring out a lot of different things. This episode, we're going to be talking about my journey of going to law school. I'm preparing for the LSAT, and I'm also looking at joining the Air Force Reserves or the Air National Guard. I'm looking to see which component is going to benefit me the most in my education and my long-term goal of being a husband and father. So let's stay tuned and jump right into it. So to get you guys updated, I graduated in uh, August with my bachelor's in information technology management from Western Governors University, WGU. Look it up online. It's an amazing college. I did it on my own time. I actually started uh, May 1st and then I was done with my last class August 30th and I officially got my diploma like everything went through September 16th so September 16th is my official graduation date and I walk across the stage on my father's birthday of August 17th my father's no longer with us but it just felt great to commemorate him by just such an accomplishment and walk across stage in Salt Lake City Utah and oh yeah I did a road trip from Atlanta all the way to Salt Lake City, Utah, over 30 hours of driving. It was amazing. Oh, I even met a good friend there, Thomas, really great guy. He's in the Air Force, Space Force, and he's been helping me through some things with uh, getting prepared to join the Air Force Reserves and work in cybersecurity there. Now, after, just after this great accomplishment, I went to Las Vegas, I went to LA, went to the beach in Santa Monica. It was amazing, very beautiful beach. Took a bunch of pictures of video and I met some great people. And then I drove all the way back cross country. So thankful for everything that's happened this year and things just can continue to get better. So right now I'm looking at joining the Air Force Reserves to get my top secret security clearance. Um, what's necessary is you got to take the ASVAB, even though, um, I have a bachelor's degree and best case scenario, I could still come in as an officer, but I've talked to a couple of recruiters and they were saying that, you know, again, talk to a lot of recruiters when you're doing research before you join, don't just sign anything. Don't just take any one person word for it. Do the research on the website and talk to as many recruiters as possible in different states and in different offices. I've talked to most recruiters and they were saying that with how things work with going into the reserves, either enlisted or an officer, they only have officer positions for people that fit certain demographic. When I say a certain demographic, they mean they have a degree in healthcare, law, uh, chaplain, um, and there may be a couple others. There are special cases where you can come in as an officer, and the term they use is coming as an officer off the street. But they were telling me that the best case scenario for me is be enlisted, enlist as, you know, coming to the Air Force Reserve as enlisted. One recruiter said I could probably come in as an E3 because of my college degree. And then after basic training, they moved to rank E4. Um, so you got to do research on different ranks and what comes with it, what's the pay, what's the benefits and things like that. You want to you wanna do really good on the ASVAB. You want to have at least of 50 on the ASVAB in general. And again, there's 12 different parts of the ASVAB, but you want to do really good. It's, it's, it's scored between 1 and 99. You want to get the highest score possible. But now on the electrical part of the ASVAB, you want to get at least a 70 to have a majority of opportunities, a majority of jobs that you can select. Now the job I'm selecting is a cyber warfare operator. Um, so CWO. Okay. So first you got seven and a half weeks basic training, BMT they call it. But then you're going to have at least 66 days of in-class training for the cyber warfare operator, um, job. Now another thing, cyber warfare operator, they have similar role types or similar jobs across the different military components. They got cyber warfare operator type of jobs in Air Force, um, Air Force Active Duty, they have an Air National Guard, they have an, uh, uh, the Marines and the Army. So I'm just, I'm doing all this research because I want help paying for law school. I'm looking to go to NYU. They have a pretty good accepting rates of around 15%. And then there's Columbia, 
just I'm I'm really looking to go to a T14 law school in New York State. I want to do the best for myself and for my family. Joining the Air Force is going to help me with this. Um, getting a top secret security clearance is going to help me with working with government contractors like Booz Allen, RTX, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, different companies like that. Um, and I just, I've been seeing the potential to make hundreds of thousands of dollars working for government contractors, either working on site, remote, or even hybrid in IT. So yeah, just looking to make really good decisions for myself. Um, put my best foot forward. My channel is all about my experience in IT, information technology, cybersecurity, and just working on creating your advantage in this life. So I want you to stay tuned. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And I also have the Creating Your Advantage podcast. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave a comment below on the video. And then also you can join my Discord server. You could be able to join my Discord server after purchasing the three ways to get a job in tech cybersecurity edition course that I have. It's going to be the link in the description. So yeah, thanks so much. I look forward to speaking with you.